Okay. Hey folks, how's everybody doing? Everybody hanging in there? Can you hear me? I'm sorry about the background. So uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, halfway through Wired Word this morning, my internet went out at home. It had gone out last night. <clears throat> Excuse me, it was gone. It was out all night long. I got up this morning, rebooted everything, and it was still out. I managed to get it up and running. I thought everything was okay. Halfway through, it went out. So I unplugged everything, grabbed my computer, ran up to church, praying that internet would still be accessible there because it's a different provider. And it is, however, <laughs> you know, there, it takes more than just a, a computer to run this. So I'm missing a couple pieces. Trudy went home to grab me uh, a camera and mic, which I thought I had here, but I don't. So I've called in this way on my phone so we can hear and see each other. And I think we can still see also the projection that's running. If you put it in speaker view, you probably won't see it. So projection's running in one little corner for now. As soon as I can, um, I'll sort of rewire, but at least we can gather this way. And if you're willing to, to sort of plunge ahead, uh, I am. So I apologize for the technical difficulties, but let's still uh, get together in God's presence. This is gonna be a little bit kludgy though, I do apologize. Well, <laughs> I can't think of a more appropriate time to tune than right now. We like to begin services here with tuning uh, just for this reason. You know, the week is full of stresses and surprises and things don't work the way they're supposed to. So we need to let all of that stuff go. We need to get it out of our psyche and out of our bodies because we are physical and spiritual animals and our systems affect each other. So let's take a couple of moments right now to tune into God's presence, a presence that's around us all of the time, but which throughout the stresses of the week, it's so easy for us to miss. Let's be intentional. Um, if this works, I'm gonna try something a little bit different this week. I'm playing um, a video that also has some audio uh, centered around 528 Hertz, which is a frequency that a lot of people have been experimenting with. It brings that peace and calm and serenity to help us become more interconnected with each other. But I know some people also like to meditate in silence. So uh, for you visual meditators, I hope you'll enjoy these visuals. For you audio meditators, I hope you enjoy the audio. And for you who would prefer to worship in silence, um, please mute your computer for a moment. And I hope that this uh, brings us all uh, closer to one another and also to God.
staying in this space, let's join our voices in prayer. Holy creative source, life spark of all being, intimate mystery of the universe. I am infused with your grace, your compassion, your wisdom, and your understanding. So help me act that way. Amen. In this moment, I am well. In this moment, I can feel your healing love for me. In this moment, I am well. In this moment, I can feel your healing love for me. Our uh, reading today is from the Gospel of John, uh, various verses from chapter 6, starting with verse 5. Jesus looked up and saw the large crowd coming toward him. He asked Philip, where will we buy food to feed these people? Jesus said this to test him, for he already knew what he was going to do. Philip replied, more than half a year's salary worth of food wouldn't be enough for each person to have even a little bit. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said, a youth here has five barley loaves and two fish, but what good is that for a crowd like this? Jesus said, have the people sit down. There was plenty of grass there. They sat down, about 5,000 of them. Then Jesus took the bread. When he'd given thanks, he distributed, it, he distributed it to those who were sitting there. He did the same with the fish, each getting as much as they wanted. When they'd had plenty to eat, he said to his disciples, gather up the leftover pieces so that nothing will be wasted. So they gathered them and filled 12 baskets with the pieces of the five barley loaves that had been left over by those who had eaten. When the people saw that he had done a miraculous sign, they said, this is truly the prophet who's coming into the world. Jesus understood that they were about to come and force him to be their king. So he took refuge again, alone on a mountain. And then also from verse 35, Jesus replied, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Well, at last week's check-in, several of us said we were feeling lethargic and having trouble finding energy. I shared this passage of scripture today for two reasons. First, to understand that feeling empathy, uh, uh, fe that feeling empty physically and spiritually indicates a need to seek respite in God. Second, even Jesus needed time to find that space where he could rest and make room for God's refueling love and recharging energy. Humans often need to physically refuel and spiritually recharge. Most of us do a decent enough job of filling up our physical fuel tanks but we're not very good at recharging our spiritual batteries. We probably don't even stop to think about having more than one system to sustain. But the human body is a lot like a modern car. And as you can tell from my accidental background today, I happen to be a Formula One fanatic, not only because the cars are fast and the driver's skills are insane, but also because the cars themselves are technological marvels. They have a complex system of internal combustion, electrical, and kinetic energy systems that all work together in a single power unit. So do we. Our spiritual and physical systems are connected and need equal nourishment. As in a modern car, 
One needs refueling, the other recharging. We must understand our physical and spiritual systems as critical interconnected components working together to keep us running. Let's consider one of the most important components of the modern power unit, the KERS system, the Kinetic Energy Recovery System. KERS is a brilliant innovation that captures the extra energy created from the friction of the brakes and the heat of the engine and stores it in a battery or a capacitor or a flywheel, something like that for later use. Typically, the driver uses KERS for an added boost when passing, but I'll let my friend Marty Brundle explain this uh, more readily. KERS, or the Kinetic Energy Recovery System, is back for 2011, and it packed quite a punch. And the Williams team have invited us in to have a look at their preparation room. So how does the system work? Well, it starts with an MGU, or a motor generator unit. It takes power from the engine during the braking phase and converts it into electricity, and it gives it to this battery pack. Then, when he presses the KERS button, that electricity comes back through the MGU, a small gearbox, back into the engine. It's the equivalent of 80 horsepower, the power of a small city car, for just under seven seconds per lap. Now, sorry. Now, think about what's happening here for a moment. Pumping the brakes stores energy for later use. Jesus understood this. He was always retreating to solitude because he needed to recharge. Even after refueling himself and 5,000 people, his spiritual batteries still required a recharge. And the way people of faith like Jesus recharge is by coming to a complete stop, to be recharged by God's infinite energy. I guess we could think of it as GERS, God's energy recovery system. When Jesus says, I am the bread of life, he's making a profound statement about the source of our energy. Is it possible that he's a little disappointed that <clears throat> me, after everyone eats their fill of fish and bread, they still don't understand the meaning behind the gesture? They've been able to refuel physically because of an act of God's spiritual energy. So whether you read this parable, imagining an abundance of food magically appearing out of thin air, or as a profound statement on the unwillingness of humans to share what they've got, the crowd's physical hunger is still satiated by a spiritual activity, by GERS. The ancient crowd, like most of us today, focused only on the material, the fish, the loaves of bread. They're concerned about their stomachs more than their spirits, unaware the two systems require balance. Jesus wants to fill our souls with the energy of God that is our spiritual sustenance, the ultimate source of all the power that, that we have in our lives, the, the food that never spoils. When we concentrate on charging our spiritual system as purposefully as we fill our stomachs, a deeper hunger is satiated, one that changes us, mind, body, and soul, one that converts all our spiritual energy into physical energy. So, if a race car generates energy by braking, how do we apply the brakes in our lives and store up some God energy? Well, there are spiritual charging stations everywhere. God is the nature of the universe, the unified field. God is recharging us, even as we sit here in spiritual community today. And community is a powerful way to recharge our spiritual batteries, to recover some kinetic energy, don't you think? During check-ins with you, I, I hear you mention some of the ways that you spiritually recharge. Prayer, service to others, meditation, creative endeavors such as art and music and reading and walking in nature and playing sports, zoning out for a while. All of these are awesome ways to spiritually recharge. All we have to do is remember to stop and then intentionally go to God with energetic intention. As quickly as we can fill the gas tanks in our cars, we can recharge our souls. In fact, the gas station is a great place to do that. The next time you're filling your car at the gas pump, just lean against the pump and, and let God recharge you while the pump fills up your car. Repeat a meditative mantra to yourself. 
know and feel God's presence within you at the gas pump, a profoundly symbolic place to seek and be refueled by God. I mean, the gas station is full of reminders about our need to refill. Just look at all the ads on the gas station window. Two for a dollar donuts, 99 cent boiled peanuts, 362 ounce big gulp specials. I mean, these are all reminders that as good a deal as they are, they're still only filling one of our two tanks. So let those ads also remind us that the bread of life is freely given. It doesn't cost us anything to recharge God's energy recovery system. And you don't have to go to a special building to find it. The bread of life is less expensive than a king size Snickers bar and ultimately so much more satisfying. So indulge yourself. God is the one thing you can have as much of as you want without gaining any weight. In fact, charging yourself with the great I am of God might take a load off. Amen. Okay, my friends, I have a question for you today, which is, how will you or do you activate your GERS, your God energy recovery system? Just think about that for a second, and I will separate you into small discussion group rooms where you are. <laughs> anyway it's good to be back with you all uh we've got i think everything set up and stable now so thanks for sticking around i would love to to hear what you all think about this concept of uh, of energy recovery and of having sort of a built-in energy recovery system and if you've thought about it uh you know what you use what you use to re to re-energize uh how do you how do you how do you um hit the button to make your GERS work. What you all talk about in your groups? You can talk for the group, you can talk for yourselves, but you can pass as well. Anybody? Yeah, I'll begin. Uh, I think for us, uh, I heard things like uh, prayer, uh, a kind of a, having a routine to the day that meet, meets you up with other people uh, and that energizes you rather than being by yourself all the time. And, and music. Uh, I was really blessed by, by Trudy's number today. That was a, the words were beautiful as, as it's her voice. That's energizing, I think. Mm -hmm. I like to get out in my garden and just kind of zone out in nature and let my head go wherever. I don't really focus on anything that is necessarily spiritual, but I, I usually feel recharged and better um, when I'm out there working. Well, I love I love that you said you don't necessarily feel anything spiritual because I think that's sort of the beauty of it, especially being in nature. It's just happening, right? Sometimes, uh, you know, I, I think probably because, especially in the West, we read all of these really cool things about people who have had these enlightened experiences, and and even Jesus, right? So we look at we look at these experiences and go, "Wow, I, I've never had one of those." But but honestly, every day is one of those experiences. Every moment is one of those experiences. And, and I have noticed so many of us, not just in this group, but, but around, talking about how much just going outside and sitting for a few minutes, just like you described, Joyce, is re-energizing and reconnecting. Even though it's not one of those, wow, I've just had an epiphany moments, you know? But that's, that's a perfect example of GERS, of, of using God's energy recovery system, of, of regenerating that energy that's already there because our systems are, are working on it. That's cool, thank you. What else did y'all talk about? Uh, Barbara. Yes. Well, you energized me today, Michael, because <laughs> I, I wanna give kudos to you because the, all of a sudden you weren't there and we got in touch with you in the earlier group and then we heard you were running to the church and um, you know, just your energy and going to make it work. You know, you didn't give up. You didn't say, oh, I lost my internet. See you later. And that was energizing for me. I, pre I very much appreciated that. So. so. Oh, oh, thanks. Al, you know me well enough to know that I don't give up until the last possible minute. Sometimes maybe I hang on a little too long. 
Thanks, Barbara. Yes, I, I'm sorry, I can't remember your name. It's Heather and Dominique. Dominique, thank you. Yes, yes Dominique, please. Um, we talked about um, I, I know um, God um, when I listen to Christian music, it brings to me a connecting of God. Beautiful, I get it, us too. There are a lot of musicians in this group here today, actually, who, 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 for whom music is exceptionally powerful way to communicate. So I relate to that. Thanks, Dominique. What else, folks? How else do you regenerate God's energy or even just your own energy kinetically? Uh, Susan, please, Susan Pratt. Well, kinetic energy means never ending. So we had a quick discussion on that energy. Maybe you don't have to come to a full stop. And that, you know, sometimes we can't or we're doing something that there is no stop to it. So we might need to learn how to um, find that intimate little connection that will help bring down the energy, God energy but still infuse it in what we are doing, whether it's something beautiful or something horrible that we have to do to get through or, or, or any, you know, um, yeah, we don't always have to put on the brakes, but we also, I think we all laughed at this was that now we know why all those electric cars are braking all the time and going slow because I didn't realize it was braking that actually brought in the energy. Yeah. Well, it also takes the energy off of the excess heat from the engine. And that's something else to consider, too, because we're always generating heat. I mean, the human body is very similar. We're always generating heat and we're always generating energy. The problem is most of it is just wasted, right? We don't recycle it. So with, with cars, we're learning, and other things, actually, we're learning how to recycle this, this wasted energy. And it just occurred to me that, you know, Jesus talks about this a lot. And, and the way that he recycles his energy or becomes re-energized is often just finding moments of solitude and, and getting away, far away from the maddening crowd, right? And um, so I think these are good examples for us too. Also, Susan, yes, the analogy about kinetic energy, this is why I love those kinetic sculptures, right? Because not only are they really peaceful, I, I think, to watch, but they also exemplify this idea of never ending energy. They're always moving, always. Always moving and always transforming, just like God's energy, right? Always moving, always transforming, always. It's always there. And I think we're a lot like that. We just end up getting out of sync because we, you know, we drive ourselves too hard and then we collapse from exhaustion. So, and you're right, it's not a matter of just putting on the brakes. It's a matter of using the brakes judiciously because for example, again, Formula One, you never stomp on the brakes all the way. You're just tapping them a little bit to get around the, the, the corners, right? So another good analogy for us, we don't, have, we don't have to stomp on the brakes full stop, but we should be tapping them often to get around the tight corners, often. That's how we regenerate. That was you, Susan, thank you. Um, anybody else, other things? Yes, Heather, please. So I, I was just thinking a thought that came up was, um, you know, I, I can be part of the problem or part of the solution. And um, the issue for me is I have to be really careful um, because, uh, I'll just say this. I, I never watched news until the pandemic because I just felt like it was really um, pulling at something and producing something in me that made me feel like internally I was part of a problem and not the love and solution. And then um, this has been an experience to, to have to be more aware of what's going on and have to take snippets of the news and I will tell you though, what I have to do is I have to take breaks from it. I can't watch it all the time. I can't watch it every day. I need to stay aware of what's going on. And even social media, what I understand is um, people are a lot more volatile than normal right now because of, I mean, I'll be honest, I've been a germaphobe. <laughs> I thought it was my own word, but it's actually a word my whole life because of my daughter's health and, um, and some other things. And so I was extremely prepared for this pandemic. 
And then now the whole world is in the same position as I am worrying about germs. And, and so I, I have a lot of experience of knowing how to readjust internally. Um, but I will say that I have to take breaks from media and really just get on the love of God and bringing peace because um, it's just a special time to work on that. Amen. Amen. I think we watch much less news than we used to before all of this started happening. Uh, just because it, it is difficult to stay in the presence of the holy divine when you're constantly being bombarded by negativity, right? I think it's important to be aware, but, but we need to be hopeful. We're, we're God's people, right? I mean, I'm hopeful about all of this. It's, it's a difficult time. Everything is exceptionally difficult right now, but there have been difficult times throughout history, and, and for some, somehow God always pulls through, always pulls us through. We always pull through. So I'm hopeful that will still happen. Media is tough. Yes, Susan. I have a quick question. Did Jesus always stay in the divine? Um, or did he sometimes allow himself to step out of it, like turning over tables and, and being angry and fighting for righteousness and political justice? Um, I think the divine is in all of us, but I don't, think we're, I don't even think he was capable of staying within that space all the time. And that's what makes changes happen. So it's like Heather said, you have to step back and step out, but you still have to be part of it. You have to be aware and you have to respond. So it's, it's, I think that's the problem is learning how to respond with that divine inside of us, but allowing us to be human and be angry and be ready to fight like Jesus did because he was a social activist. Absolutely. But he was a divine social activist. So let me ask you a, a question. I think it's interesting that you think that, or that you're suggesting that overturning the tables is a human activity and not a divine activity because it seems like, you know, Jesus gets angry and we think anger is human, that if you're divine, you don't get angry. But even in the Bible, God gets angry. Now, I don't necessarily believe that that's actually a correct representation of God because we put our human emotions on God. But I'm, you know, I'm wrestling with the idea that these things that we think are bad because they're human are not. This is part of the divine experience. Our, our, our human anger, our human emotions, our human drive to create a more socially equitable world, it requires action. And sometimes that action requires a little bit of violence. I'm sorry. It requires turning a table over to get the attention of the system that will not pay attention to you unless you turn the table over. So I still see that as divine activity, even though it's not, you know, what we normally associate with like the all encompassing peace of divinity. I think we think of divine masters like Jesus and, and Buddha and Muhammad and others as sort of floating in nirvana on their cloud in, in deep peace, right? Which maybe they are at this point, but while they were really having this experience, they acted for the divine by doing things that we sometimes give negative attributions to. And, and I think we maybe, maybe we do that a little bit too, in too blanket of a manner. Just stuff I'm wrestling with, Susan. It's this duality thing, right? What's good, what's bad, what's human, what's divine. It's all both. It is all both. It is all both. And anger, and that's only, that. these are emotions that we're made of. So we have to understand them and use them. So they're, sure, they're all divine, but Jesus could have just sat back and watched the gold melt if he wanted to do something divine, you know, to change it as a miracle rather than to just be a human being standing in front of them saying, enough. We can't yeah. take this anymore. So I, yeah. I, I love the, the duality. You're right. It is all duality. But then also, also, if Jesus had done that, it wouldn't have been a very good example for humans because then this divine being is doing all the work, right? Mac, please. Yeah, when you said something about violence sometimes being a part of it, I would like to add, if I may, that violence that harms other human beings is not part of the creative. I think when you take a thing like a table and turn it over or you take a a statue that stood as a mark of hatred and tear it down and that kind of, I, I think those are certainly uh, within the keeping of divine uh, action and anger. Agreed. And, and thank you for that clarification. That's great. Anything else, folks? Phenomenal discussion. I was glad to get back in the fray. Thank you. Heather, please. I just want to, I guess, make a small addition. Um, for 21 years, I, I have been fighting 
for rights for my daughter and I'm saying this while she's gone and I am exhausted. And I will tell you that I've had to relook over and over how I do things. And, and I understand that um, I get so much further when I can quiet my soul and come from absolute love. And um, the, the, the difficult part about coming from love when I'm trying to advocate is that's even, it, it's, it's really wearing because it's my heart that has to come out and show. And I found it's a lot easier to project anger. And, um, and that's what I'm afraid of. Um, when I'm putting out anger, I know that anger does change things, but I also understand that, that if I'm able to come from love when I try to change things, um, it just has a different energy from it. And I love the saying of turning the tables for Jesus. I have used that for 21 years. But I, I will also say that there's been a, a soul toll that I've had to deal with. And I've really, really been readjusting my entire life because I've aged beyond my 52 years because of it. And I'm now aware of how important it is for me to readjust and find a new way to really what you originally said, connect with God far more than I ever have before. Thank you, Heather. Thank you. Here's something special for all of you, and especially you, Heather.
<sighs> well, that was lovely. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Morning. Good morning. We're a little choked up on this end after seeing the yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, that was so powerful. <laughs> my, <sighs> my sister sent that to us and uh, we had to share it with you. So it was Wonderful. really neat. Glad you did. <laughs> um, so last week when we did our ch community check-in circle, I posed the question, um, what, what is something you need? And I have to say that I, um, throughout the week thought back on that so much. I mean, I often think back on the things that you say, but um, I just really enjoyed hearing you state that and, and knowing what to kind of think on for you for the week. So as always, thank you for sharing the way that you do. And I, I know for me, um, recognizing what I needed also caused me to recognize when that need was being met in, in ways throughout the week. Um, so I thought today maybe we could just share something about your week when you felt like a need was being met or something that was a celebration to you or brought you joy. And um, just in a word or two, if you wouldn't mind sharing that. And if you don't feel like speaking, of course, that's fine too. You can just say pass. And if you're sharing the screen with someone, we'd love to hear from both people if possible. But um, it's okay too if you'd like to pass. So let's just take a few seconds and think about something from the week that brought us joy or that was a celebration or a need met. And then we'll go around the, the virtual circle here and just share a word or two. Gary, would you like to begin? I'd love to begin. Um, awesome. I live alone and I don't have any kids around. I don't have any girlfriends around or wives or any of those people around. So actually to satisfy my, make, what makes me happy and satisfies most of my needs is that all human beings need to interact and interface with other people. And even though you're not really here with me, I'm thousands of miles away from you, Seeing you all makes me feel as though I'm interacting. And uh, I, it's the human contact that's important. They say that when you expire and you're looking back on your life and things that were important to you, it's not how much money you made. It's not what kind of car you drove. It's not how big your McMansion was. Uh, it's not the vacations you took. It's the interpersonal interactions that you had with other human beings during the course of your life that you're going to weigh the value of your life on after you leave. And I get that from telephone calls from friends. I get that from uh, attending this church. So thank you. Thank you, Gary. Love that you're here. Thank you. Mac and Joyce? Yeah, I, I have that said I needed some grace and I had been having some memories come up in my dreams about things in my past, the um, interactions that were not very good with other human beings. And I found it lifted. I no longer dreamed about it. I no longer thought about it. And it only, you know, so yes, I received grace and I'm, I'm grateful. Um, I had said I needed my family last week and last week was um, my birthday, and so I heard from <laughs> my sister out in Arizona, and my son and daughter-in-law and two grandkids in Florida, and got to talk to them and receive texts and cards from everybody else. So that was a need met. Excellent. Happy, Happy birthday. birthday. <laughs> Thank you. Martha, it's not your birthday, but hi. <laughs> There we go. Uh, I received something yesterday that was totally unexpected. And um, someone who was very kind brought me a meal. And uh, it was such a surprise. And it, it filled my heart with joy. And I really appreciated it. That's very nice. Very yes, nice. Thank you. 
Um, Heather and Dominique, if you'd like to share, if, if not, you can pass as well. Do you want to share? Go for it. Uh, what was something fabulous that happened this week? Um, Build your soul. Oh my glory. Um, my mom um, said I um, didn't leave in the house, my, our house. So um, my mom took me um, very first time out. And where'd you go? To Publix. And she, yeah, so she got to see, um, she, 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 Dominique works at Publix, but she's on medical leave because of the virus. So she, she got to um, say hi to her fellow employees. And uh, my big joy is, uh, so, well, we, we met with my mother who lives in Lely Palms and we sat outside at Flacco's and had lunch yesterday. And we were the only people out there. I think it was probably because it was kind of hot, but it was just so incredible. We, 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 ate, we took like two hours to eat. We just um, got to sit and it's, it's such a joy to actually physically be in the same place with, with someone you love for a little while right now. That's beautiful. We love Flacco's. <laughs> that place is good. <laughs> Alex? So I'm um, with, with Joyce, like last week I was needing my family. So I've been uh, rearranging closets, you know, finding projects around the house. So I found this, a whole bunch of pictures. So I put all my pictures together, but I found pictures of uh, my, my mom, my uncle when they were young. So I shared one of the pictures of my uncle, he already passed, but when he was like 18, one of those glossy black and white, very artistic pictures. And it created a lot of buzz within the family and text. And I sent it to everybody and my uh, cousins, that's her, her dad, he, her husband created a little um, video of, with that picture and pictures of her. So it was very nice. And that, that brought me joy. That my <laughs> that's, it. that's awesome. <laughs> Thank you. Barry and Charlotte? Well, for me, I think that we're kind of doing a remodeling project on the lanai out here, and I feel that I can be part of that. And I think that's important, is to, you know, for, get kind of fulfilling to be part of that, whether, you know, to, to do. Um. For me, joy always every week is a chance to talk with um, our children and the grandchildren. My sister-in-law, even before the virus and the sheltering in place, always sent me on Fridays a text message that said, thinking of you, love. And it's just a real neat way to connect with her and my brother. Uh, but this week especially, I got to speak with my sister and a good friend of mine in Venice, Florida. So it's been a very fulfilling week of connecting. Excellent, thank you. Helen. Okay, well, let me share with you something I, I did this morning. Uh, it was having to do kind of with that song you just did, Michael. This is called A Place in the Choir, and it's by the Celtic Thunder. And I think Dave, uh, Dave Reverend Dave sent it to me. And I must thank her, but it has animals in it, and it talks about people in the choir. And for me, it was it was just an opening, just like you did the one "It Is Well with My Soul." I think all of us today have been able to connect and and, and make our lives better because of of just being us, you know, and, and connecting with each other. So I think that is my gift, you know, just being just being with you guys. You're a gift too, Helen. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Nancy? Are you the only Nancy right now? Yes. Okay. Um, this is actually easy because this week, uh, my 
my brother who had um, been hospitalized for COVID finally tested negative and I was able to see him. And uh, that was just wonderful. And uh, I also want to mention, because this concerns the church, um, Helen was very kind and asked me my brother's address and sent a card on behalf of the church and he was just thrilled to receive it. So good week. Uh, that's great news, Nancy. Thank you. And thanks, Helen. Yeah, Helen's amazing. Mark. Oh, you're muted again, bud. With me, I was kind of uh, housebound due to the knee thing. So this is like day number five of uh, <laughs> being cooped up in here. So one of the things is I am thankful because I can start to talk to this guy. <laughs> I'm beginning to think that maybe I may be getting a little bit loony. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, the whole things I've been reading, I've been making use of the time. So uh, my boss, my quarter about my inability to walk, uh, gave me the time off to heal. Well, before I wasn't given that option. Oh, that's great, Mark. I'm, I'm glad to hear it. I hope you heal up. And uh, it's been nice having you having you tune in throughout the week too, so that you've got people to talk to other than your cardboard cutout of Superman. <laughs> we might have to talk more about that later. Okay. Uh, Thanks, I asked Mark. if you would Thank mind you. flying down and picking something like uh, Chinese food, like over in uh, Canton or Beijing, but. He doesn't say anything. Yeah. <laughs> what kind of superhero are you? Thanks, Mark. <laughs> Thanks, man. Meg? I'll pass. Okay, thank you. Uh, Hugh and Barbara. Or did they move? Yeah, that's good. With, um, going along with this theme of connectivity and family, I think my biggest joy was the fact that we have two grandchildren with their boyfriends came for the weekend. And not just that they want to come down, but they're so respectful about it. They're so respectful about distancing and masks. And um, and the other, th you, you know that they're grown up and they've grown up well when they come with food and, you know, just not wanting to use our food and they bring their own stuff and they brought a really lovely, for Hugh's birthday, happy hour treat. Um, because while they were growing up, they thought happy hour was really called pappy hour because mm -hmm. Hugh liked happy hour so much. And um, so they brought a, a beautiful spread and, and drinks and fixings and everything that could go with it. So that gave me joy. Well, that gave me joy too. It was wonderful um, that they did it quite spontaneously, and uh, it it was great. Uh, it was just a wonderful moment. Oh, and I, I might add, I mean, double joy that um, our granddaughter will be celebrating her twenty fifth anniversary or birthday next weekend, and I wanted to do something special for her, and I won't labor you with a lot of words but it was very difficult trying to find a place in Cape May that isn't too crowded that would take a reservation that was outside that was beautiful that was historic that it met all my and I worked hard at it for a couple of days and we had brunch on a beautiful veranda yesterday and everything was perfect so that was a god moment awesome thank you both beautiful and Susan Pratt Mine is very simple. I'm, I only go out once a week. Um, so I feed the birds and I have a little bell on the back door. So they have become accustomed to the fact that when I go out early in the morning and the bell is ringing, um, by the time I get down to the tree, I have a little fairy garden that I call and then he, they eat in the middle of it. And by the time I fill that feeder, they're all, I have one cardinal I call Mr. Red. And he usually sits about three feet from me 
and then all the other birds are already in the trees, including the woodpeckers. So by the time I fill it and turn my back and walk away, I'm just, I'm just delighted with my friends. <laughs> and they could hold some good conversations, you know? And there are no arguing. There is no arguing. <laughs> so it's wonderful. That feeds my soul all the time. <laughs> Terrific. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I guess it's down to us. Yeah. I, um, someone that's on our prayer list and has been for a long time, Kevin Jackson, is a friend of ours that we know from our work in prison. And um, he was released back in December after eight years in prison and just now found work. So we were just jumping for joy um, that he, he now has two jobs, not one, but two jobs at this crazy time. And um, that was a real joy in my week to hear that news. Um, for me, I've been enjoying our family movie nights, actually. It's, you know, the kids <laughs> are home a little longer than usual because of the pandemic, and I like it. So <laughs> we've started kind of working our way back through the Harry Potter series, which I did not enjoy when they first came out. And now I'm watching them going, wow, why didn't I like these? They're, they're just wonderful. So it's been nice to have these, some, some family movie time. It's, I, I find a lot of joy in that. <laughs> You what know, other you, family movies have you been watching? Well, we can talk about that later, Mark. Just, uh, <laughs> the rest of them, yeah. <laughs> Harry Potter movies are long. Basically. Yeah, I mean, the Harry Potter movie, you know, one of those movies is like a half-day experience. So, you know, you have to stop yeah, at eight All of them, you need an entire time. week to go, at least three weeks to go through them all without your exactly. brain turning to mush. Exactly. <laughs> and, okay, and, my friends, I, thank I you. I kind of feel like I'm in the middle of a Brady Bunch opening and closing credits. Like I, I well, hang on, I'm, I'm about to change that on you. <laughs> okay, my friends, thank you for sharing with each other um, and, and sharing openly with the community as well. Let's move into our prayer time, if I can get things to work. Oh, yay. So... Here we go. I'll remind you that um, we've talked a lot today about interconnection and interconnection through God, particularly. And, and for me, one of the this idea of being interconnected through God changed my concept of, of prayer forever. For a long time, I didn't really understand prayer because I always mistakenly sort of thought of it as begging God for things. But but over the years, I have grown to understand prayer more as a really profound way to connect with the divine spark that's present within all of us and that then sends out energy throughout the universe that connects all of us together. So I firmly believe, because I have experienced this for myself and other people who've prayed for me, that when we pray, we're sending all the love we can out to God who then takes care of the rest of it. So I think there is really something to be said for intentional prayer. So I hope you'll join me in prayer today and that as we go through the people that and places that we're praying for, that you'll speak them out loud as well to send some intentional loving energy to God. Today, we're praying for our first responders, our healthcare workers, service industry workers, field hands, farmers, scientists, thought leaders, and everyone who's keeping our infrastructure working. We're also praying for these individuals. Melinda and Peter Humphrey, Betsy Gehrig and her family, Mohammed Mo El Sheri, Michael McMillan, Kim Fowler, Arthur Minaldi, Joe Cole, Jack Bills, Linda Kincaid, Joe Palamba, Joy McLaughlin, Mary White, Thomas McGinnis, Gabriel Arndt, Dan Seneco, Ann Gallagher, Robin Jarvis, Guillermo Gota, Kevin Jackson, Pauline Arsenault, Beverly Rogerson, Charles Legere, Michael Morris, Richard Connor, Leslie Cole, and the victims, especially the children, of walls, disasters, and violence, both natural and systemic, worldwide. Let's pray.
staying in this space, let's consider the way that communion is also a symbolic way for us to understand our interconnection with each other and God. That last night in the upper room when Jesus gathered with his disciples, he took some bread and he gave thanks for it and he blessed it and he broke it and he passed it amongst his disciples saying, take and eat this bread. And every time that you eat this bread, remember me. Remember the things that I've taught you about the divine human spark that exists in all of us. Remember the things that I've exemplified about God's work through humanity by my actions. And most importantly, every time you eat this piece of bread or any piece of bread, think of it as the literal body of God. Consider that it is made from the same stuff as you, and that when we eat this bread, we are very much taking God energy into us. Perhaps part of the reason that food nourishes us, mind, body, and soul, is because not only is this physical, but its physical presence is made up of a subatomic material that I think is as spiritual as the fundamental building blocks of reality. So will you take a moment to consider what the body of God means and what sharing it means as we share the body of God together? In a similar manner, God took a cup and he gave, Jesus, God, took a cup and gave thanks for it. And he passed it amongst his disciples saying, take and drink from this cup. And every time you drink from this cup, remember me. Remember the things that I've taught you about the love of God, which flows through all human beings unconditionally. And every time from now on that you drink from this cup or any cup, Think of the love of God that's within it. And when you drink the love of God, imagine that it is flowing into you and through you to every other human being on the planet because God's love truly flows through all of us. Will you take a moment now to consider what it means to fill ourselves with God's love? May God continue to bless us, mind, body, and soul, to fill us with love and help us exemplify God's love to the world now and forevermore. Amen. Well, my friends, we are coming to the end of service, so I just have a couple of things I'd like to remind you with. Please visit our website, GoWithTheCurrent.org, for information, for blog posts, for videos. This video, uh, the Wired Word, hopefully still recorded, um, and Intersect, they're all posted to our website every week. These videos will be up tomorrow afternoon. And of course, Intersect goes up on Wednesday after we do it. Um, we continue this conversation throughout the week, both at Intersect on Wednesdays at noon and Fridays uh, at our Tech Talk on 2. While this is generally a technology talk Friday afternoons, we end up usually recapping what we talked about through the week too. So please, I hope that you will all uh, tune in again for us, not only at our 9 o'clock and 10.15 gatherings on Sunday, but also Wednesdays at noon and Fridays at 2 p.m. I hope also that you'll continue to bring friends. I am so thankful uh, to have seen uh, everybody today and to Nancy for inviting friends and to Heather and Dominique for attending today. Thank you both so much for being here. Thank you all for being here. Let's continue to invite folks to see if we can't make something new and exciting happen with this unique style of online church that we're, uh, that we're experimenting with, quite frankly. Today was really experimental. Um, one of the things that you can do that will be most effective in getting people to church uh, is sharing the things that we post with your Facebook friends. Uh, if you can see in the right-hand corner uh, here where the share button is circled, 
that button shows up on every post from the church and there is at least one post every day. So if you guys would all share that button to your own social media places, you can also share it right to Instagram from Facebook and we post on Instagram as well. Share those things that helps get the word out uh, to people and, and hopefully we'll start having uh, even more and more people show up to join us in this conversation. Finally, I will remind you that everything we do here is really in order to have a deeper, more personal, more intimate relationship with God. And I know that we are all giving back to God in abundance. And I also am well aware of the fact that all of us gathered here uh, are giving to this place through God uh, with everything we have. So I am thankful for that. And, and I ask us all to consider not only how we might be able to uh, sustain ourselves and thrive as a spiritual community through the tithes and the offerings that, uh, that God asks us to give, but also through different and unique maybe uh, ways of reaching people and generating revenue that, that are now available to us because we're online that may not have been before. We are uh, completely open to suggestion and I'm asking everybody to be very imaginative and, and see what inspires us as we do our best to continue to sustain uh, this community. Helen. I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt, but- Don't worry about it. I just talked about in our break room I got an email yesterday, and you might have got it also, Michael, about Pat Burris's 80th birthday. Oh, it's no, coming the 14th of August. Her daughter sent me an email and wants us to try to send as many cards as we can. I okay, have one here, uh, and I'll just put, you know, our names, you know, aren't from the church, but if anybody else wants her address, you can probably call Dorothy. And, but I do have it if you really want it. She's in St. Louis, Missouri. Uh, but it's her 80th birthday. Wow, that's terrific. Thank, thanks, Helen. Thank you, uh, we wrote, I wrote that down. Well, I'll, I'll call them and see what's up with them, too. That's great. Uh, the Burrises have been uh, in uh, longtime members, and they finally moved uh, to Missouri permanently. Um, okay, my friends, I think that is... Oh, Mark, you've got something. Yeah, uh, I, I was on Facebook. I heard uh, about a week ago or so, John Olger, who was a long time member of this church, uh, has passed away. Yes, yes, that's right. John, John Auer, a long time member. <clears throat> Some of you may remember him. Um, he had moved to California many years ago to live with his family. He, he passed away uh, just two, two weekends ago after a long battle with a, a variety of diseases. So yeah, I was sorry to hear about that, but I'm also glad that John is, is in a a better place. Yeah, I wish. Well, okay, Mark, let's, uh, thank you. Let's join our voices together in prayer one last time so we can head into the week full, hopefully, of inspiration. Let's pray. Life-giving source of our material world, we are filled with the joy of your presence. As we enter a world full of challenges, keep us in mindful bliss and surround us with love. We pray in your many names and images. Amen. Thank you all so much for being here today. Peace, love, happiness, inspiration, and beauty encompass you throughout the week. Amen, my friends. Thank, Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Michael. Chat.